our playtime chat today, we're going to be talking to one toddler group leader who is looking to reopen her group gradually um, and have all the um, COVID safe measures in place to enable her to do that. Obviously, at this point, I need to stress that it's obviously relevant for her venue, her local community, her church guidelines she's following, um, the area that she's in, and she's obviously following government guidelines as well. Um, and obviously you can um, look into your own guidelines in your area, but we just thought it'd be really helpful to have um, ideas that were relevant for everybody um, as you look to reopen, whether it's now or whether it's uh, later in the year, just to help you, um, give you some tips to just um, help you along the way. Well, welcome Fiona. It's lovely to have you with us on Playtime Chats. Why don't you just introduce yourself and uh, just tell us a little bit about your group. So I'm Fiona and I'm the leader of uh, the toddler group at Bexley Christian Life Centre. It's in South East London in the London Borough of Bexley. Okay, since lockdown, groups obviously uh, changed dramatically and I know that yours did um, as well. So just tell us a little bit about your story and what you've done differently. So we realised that the, when the pandemic was going to be quite long, we had to uh, change what we were doing and how we were contacting families. And uh, this year has been a bit of a learning curve for us. So we started off, first of all, by weekly emails and sending some seasonal craft directly to the, the families' homes. But when September came and restrictions eased a bit, we, we spent some time working out how we could safely run a face-to-face -face group. But we had the situation, like many groups, I'm sure, where the group had naturally reduced in numbers because the children had gone to nursery. So we'd gone from 25 families to only about three that would be available in September. Oh, I bet that was really, really hard, wasn't it? So how did you then uh, connect with new families? How did you do that? Well, we're, we're listed on, on places like Netmums and, and other sites such as that. But on this occasion, we found that most new families came through personal recommendations on our local Bexley Borough Mummies group. And uh, we grew from having three families, like 22 families in about two weeks. Wow. We, yeah, and we realized that people just really wanted to come back to face-to-face -face groups. Yeah, definitely. So Fiona, thinking about reopening your group now, uh, you successfully uh, ran a great uh, COVID safe group in the autumn and you're going to do it similar now when you reopen um, in the future. Just tell us a little bit how you instigated all that and the things that you covered. Okay so first of all we had to create a brand new risk assessment because everything had changed, we had to complete new regulations and things to think of um, but we're fortunate that we do our group in a church that nothing else happens during the day so we can take our time with the setup and the pack down and to be able to do the things that are extra like wiping down the surfaces and the door handles and things that just isn't a part of a normal toddler group in normal times but um a toddler group has uh, the normal components that you'd expect there's play there's craft there's story time there's music and snack time as well um but due to covid restrictions it's a socially distanced group so each family have their own matted areas which they need to stay on during the session and for the most part they generally do um, I've, I find that if, if, if the children are getting a little distracted later on in the session we bring out some new um, interactive toys for them to to work with with their parent or carer and it just it just helps control that situation a bit more but um, so we book um, they have to book before we they come and how do they do that we use um eventbrite okay eventbrite and we found that been very useful and the it helps us to know who's there and obviously if there's a covid outbreak which we haven't had um thus far but we know exactly who's come and it just keeps us a, a track of of who's there so um because we can only have a maximum of 10 families in the in the hall we worked out what space there was and how you know how many we could fit in safely so it's only 10 families um, and if we're oversubscribed we have a week on week off policy um, so when they come to the session our families are signed in at the door their hands are sanitized and the children's too 
And if they haven't got their face mask on yet, then they don the face mask. Um, all their coats and belongings and, and buggies are left in the buggy park before they come in the main session, just to reduce the amount of stuff that's in the room. But um, we've reduced the length of our session as well. So it's only an hour now, um, which has really helped us. So we have 10, 15 minutes of people arriving and people playing with their designated box of toys, which has a, a complete set of um, a variety of toys in it to keep their interest. Um, then we have story time. We're trialing, and now we're reopening, we're trialing playing our story videos over the system rather than doing it at the front so that everybody could hear. And we do do a simple sign language as part of our of our stories just to right. help gauge. Um, and we also have craft time, which, well, we took the view that we would prepare all the craft beforehand in the days beforehand. So it had time to quarantine and it would be placed onto the mat before the session started so that um, there's, it reduces the, the walking around really. We they have Teddy Bear's Picnic where everyone brings their own food and drink and sits on their mat and have it. But then of course we come to music time. It used to be called song time, but at the moment we've taken the view that we're not singing we'll see come September what the restrictions are and whether we're, we, we do that. But for now, we encourage everybody to do the actions and to play the musical instrument that's in their box that's on their mat. And that works quite well. In fact, we get to the point where at the end of that bit, where they're, they're wanting more so that we take requests and then we find them and put them through the system. So that's, that's worked good. And then right at the very end, after a little bit more play, we ask all of the parents and carers to use the wipes that are in their box to wipe down the toys, put them back in the box and then leave staggered. So there's not too many people all at once trying yeah. to get out of the building. Brilliant. That sounds like an amazing system that you have there and very COVID safe. And um, yeah, I'm sure you've given lots and lots of ideas to group uh, leaders there that can um, initiate those in their groups too. So that's great. So what are you looking forward to most when you restart? I think it's just seeing everybody again. I think what we noticed in, in the autumn term was how much people really appreciated, although you were still two metres apart, you still got your masks on and, and you're doing all the socially distanced things, but being able to talk eye to eye, as it were, with your families and just say, how has your week been? And for them to be able to to just tell you how their week's been and how their lockdown has been. And it was really kind of points in the direction of perhaps what we need to offer as a toddler group, or maybe we can point them in the direction that they can get the help or, or that they're, they're after. Um, and or even if it's not that detailed, just nice to have a chat. So that's what I'm looking forward yeah. to. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much, Fiona, for sharing with us today. No worries. Thank you, Helen. And I, I really appreciate you being able to look at the Facebook sites of uh, Care for the Family and the Playtime and also 1277. And of course, because I'm in London, also the London Network of Parent and Toddler Group, um, they have their own Facebook and we meet on Zoom. And it's just been really good to just meet and get ideas and know that we're on the right track. Yeah, and if anybody wants to contact you or any of those Facebook groups, um, just jot it down in the chat below um, and I'm sure Fiona or myself will be in contact with you and help you to navigate uh, what you're actually looking for. So please get in contact with us and we'd love to hear from you. But thank you again, Fiona. It's been lovely chatting to you. Bye. Bye-bye.